Chapter 13. Baptism. I, those who will see God. First Bible lesson, John chapter 3 verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Second Bible lesson, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Follow peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Golden text, 1 John chapter 3 verse 3. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Do you now realize the reason why the Israelites have perished? Till today, they are still saying that Jesus the Christ has not yet come. Does it mean that he has not come? Where was he born? He was born at Bethlehem of Judea in the village of David. He grew up there from a tender age to become an adolescent. At the age of 30 he was still in the village. At the end he was baptized. After baptism, he received the Holy Spirit and did marvelous works for three years. But until this day the Jews do not know him. They are arguing that Elijah has to come first before the Messiah. Malachi chapter 4 verse 5. If you mention to any of them that Jesus the Christ had come you will be driven away and regarded as a demented person. They are wailing and lamenting. They are knocking their heads on the sand and performing all forms of wicked acts. They have bluntly refused to be born again, for that reason they perish. Have you now realized why he said to Nicodemus, except a man is born again he cannot see the kingdom of God, John chapter 3 verse 5. If you don't change from your evil ways of life, if you don't repent, it means you cannot see God. It is said that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 15. Be born again. Have you now seen the reason why Christ asked, how difficult is it for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God? Matthew chapter 19 verse 23, Mark chapter 10 verse 24. Do you see the reason why God first sent John the Baptist, and instructed him not to eat or drink and do any other thing? Matthew chapter 3 verse 4. Locust bean and wild honey was to be his food. John the Baptist taught the people how to fast and pray, and he also baptized people. He did all things so that he could reveal him. It is not that easy to know the Lord. Flesh and blood cannot identify the Lord. Academic wisdom cannot reveal the Lord to you. You have heard, as he says, this is the new covenant I will enter into with the house of Israel after those days, I will write my laws in their hearts, a neighbor shall not teach a neighbor, neither shall a brother teach his brother saying, know ye the Lord, because all men shall know him from the least to the greatest, because I will be merciful unto their unrighteousness and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 33 Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12 it is on this basis that you have heard the gospel of today. If you want to know the Lord, and our Lord Jesus Christ, if you seek to know that He is on earth, if you want to know that God is the one doing this work, be born again, refrain from all your old ways of life and put up a new pattern of life. You have to repent from all evil practices you have been doing in the past, be born again and do good works. Otherwise, till doomsday you shall ever continue to wait anxiously for Christ with the statement, until Jesus the Christ comes back, and for your 100 incarnations you will remain where you are. Those who have gone to Israel and Jerusalem are in this hall and they know and can confirm that there is no Jew who believes that Christ is the Son of God. They claim that Christ is their Son. They regard him as an ordinary commoner in the society. Nobody recognizes him, and at any point in time you swim in their en masse on pilgrimage, they regard you as dunheads. Why was he killed? They said, because you, being a man, placed yourself in the position of God. That was the cause of their provocation. Many of them conjecture, oh, look at Mary's son, you and I are mates or I am older than you, and now you say you are the son of God. They ordered that he should be arrested and crucified. Because of the love of God for mankind, he first of all sent John the Baptist to come and preach repentance, confession of sins and abhorrence from sinful acts. John came and taught people how to do good works, so that they may believe in him, and that, when he shall come, he shall forgive their sins, and they will know him. Matthew chapter 3 verse 4. This explains why, when Paul met a group of people he asked them saying, Did you receive the Holy Spirit, when you believed? But they answered that they have never heard of such. He asked them, what type of baptism did you receive? Acts chapter 19 verse 3. They said it was that of John the Baptist. 
and Paul told them that John's baptism was for repentance, so that they may believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that they surrendered themselves to be baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Immediately Paul placed his hands on their heads, twelve of them, the Holy Spirit descended upon them and their eyes were opened. Be peaceful and holy, if you must see God. Have you taken note of what happened to those people? But you continue to maintain, I was already baptized, I am already a communicant, I am a bishop, or a pope. I was cast into a water, etc. How will you, with such numerous claims enter into this kingdom? How will you know him? A great many people, numbering in millions, have testified that God has come down. The children of God and the angels of God are also here. But you are telling others, get behind us, because Jesus the Christ will crash land from the sky. Is it not the same thing that you have heard? You are true witnesses to what is going on in the world today. Every person is singing the same music of, I have been baptized already, I was dipped into a water, or my father was the founder of the other church. I am asking, have you seen the Lord? Have you seen this kingdom? If somebody tells you that he has seen God you will gush and bark at him. If somebody tells you that he has seen the Holy Spirit you shout on him with fury to get away from you, because according to you, the Holy Spirit stopped on the day of Pentecost. If you tell somebody that you have seen the children of God performing mighty works with the power of God, the same will tell you that such people are not operating with the power of God. In a group where upwards of 40, 40, people are gathered at one place, 5, 5, people will attest that God has not come and does not exist, while 35, 35, people will testify that they have seen God face to face, that they have seen Christ and the Holy Spirit, and the Kingdom of God. Those five human beings who claim that God does not exist I wonder whether they are sane at all. Don't you search yourselves before you misbehave. That goes in conformity with what the second lesson says follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Why you are taught here to refrain from telling lies, fornication, indulgence in diabology, and not to hate somebody, not to drink liquor or take medication, not to eat meat and fish, etc., is done in order that you may be able to see this kingdom. This is not a kingdom where somebody tells you, lo, here, or lo, there, but behold the kingdom is in our midst. Do you recall to mind when the Pharisees and the scribes went to him to ask of him when the kingdom of God shall come? Luke chapter 17 verse 20. Is he not that kingdom of God, that son of God, that son of man and is he not God the Father? What was his reply? He said, The kingdom of God cometh not by observation, neither do men say lo, here or lo, there, for behold the kingdom of God is in your midst. What he meant was that he, standing before them was that God's kingdom. Why was it impossible for Herod, Pilate and the rest of them to know him? Was he too small to be recognized? Did they not see what he did? It was, because they refused to be born again. They refused to possess righteousness and they refused to walk in holiness with all men. Remember the second lesson, follow peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. John purified himself in order to identify Christ. Even though God will stand by your side, you will not see him there, if you don't keep this injunction, and at all times you will complain that you have seen apparition or fetish, you will continue to argue this point, until you walk into hellfire and perish. Continue to make arguments. It is not that easy. If John the Baptist had eaten or taken drink, or become angry at any time, no one would have known the Son of God. Even though Christ would have remained here on earth for one million years, nobody would have known him. But since it stands that, if the Father does not accomplish anything, nobody can do it, it is clear that John the Baptist was his foreigner. The duty of John the Baptist was to come and reveal him. That was why the Father adorned him with incessant fasting and prayer. Most of you said he ate locust, a kind of insect, but he ate locust bean, a kind of bean, and wild honey. That was his own food. He ate these things, so that he could attain a level which will make him capable to reveal him to the Israelites. Do you think it is that easy, for you to identify a certain person as the Son of God, or tell somebody that he is the Son of God or the Almighty God? You are a robber, you are still committing fornication, and telling lies, you are bearing malice and you have not repented but you claim you have seen him. Where have you seen him? 
You can now realize why it is said that, except we are born anew we cannot see the kingdom of God. You have heard our golden text, as was read thus, and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even, as he is pure. Because John hoped in him, he purified himself, he did not marry, he did not tell lies and he did not live with people. He used animal skin as his cloth. He did not do anything evil. He was not angry, and was independent. He did not associate with people, because he hoped in him and was seeking to know him. John did not behave in this way in order to become God, or to get money or power. But he did these things in order to attain that level of perfection, so that he may be capable of revealing him. Nobody would have recognized him, not to talk of telling another person, Behold the Son of God. Nobody would have known him throughout eternity. Now that you don't have him who will take away your sins, who will save you, since you don't know him? And who will you follow? Baptize and receive the Holy Spirit. All the series of baptisms you have undergone were signs of repentance but the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ is different. When you confess your sins and receive the baptism of Christ your sins will be forgiven, and you will receive the Holy Spirit, your eyes will be opened and you will follow him. But what about your claims that you have been baptized already? Since your eyes are not opened it is obvious that you don't know him, and since you don't know him I want you to explain how you will be saved. That was why he said to the disciples, Go ye therefore and make all nations my disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and, lo, I am with you alway, even unto the end of the world. Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 and 20. Sometimes you argue that you are a communicant and a pastor, but you have buried 100 wives, you are involved in litigations, you have illicit gin in your house, you have your snuff also with you, you belong to cults like Ep, Abar, etc. You are a murderer and simultaneously a member of armed robbery syndicate. Such a person who is ardently involved in such practices, I want you to tell me how feasible it will be for him to see the Lord. Even here in brotherhood, are you told to refrain from fornication, so that you may have a husband or child, or wife, or money? It is far from this. You are to refrain from these things, so that you may see the glory of God, so that you may see God know him and believe in him. Do you remember at a certain time when people saw him and questioned, Rabbi when did you come here? And he answered and said, You look not for me, because you saw me there, but because you were sumptuously fed with bread. That is, why you look for me. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but labor for the meat that will endure forever, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed in readiness for this assignment. John chapter 6 verse 27. It is not that easy to carry out this assignment. Nobody knew in Israel that Christ was the Son of God. You can recall to mind a certain person who was born blind, when our Lord Jesus Christ spat on the ground and made a skittle out of it and a cross on his eyes and the man received his sight. But he did not know Christ was the Son of God, and he did not also believe in him. But Christ caused him to receive his sight. He heard that the Christ will come but when Christ caused him to receive his sight he did not know him. That was why, when he was asked who restored his sight he answered and said, That man says his name is Jesus. They questioned to know what he did so that his sight could be restored, and the man explained to them. They all shouted that he was not from God, and that, if he was from God he would have not done it that way. The man, the man who received his sight, said, Whether he is from God or not I do not know but all I know is that I was blind but now I have received my sight. John chapter 9 verses 1 to 25. Until this day that is the same statement our members are making. Some will maintain, whether it is Beelzebub or apparition, I do not know, all I know is that brotherhood has healed my sickness. The people went back to the man and questioned, lift up your hand into the sky and swear in God's name, how he, Christ, managed to restore your sight. The man asked, whether they were seeking to become the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. They retorted saying, Woe unto you! It is your father who seeks to be his disciple. We do not know him. We know Moses who had been conversing with God. All this was said, while they did not know, that our Lord Jesus Christ was the Son of God. That was, why they went back to that man and requested him to swear in the name of God and declare what Christ did to him, because according to them Christ was an abominable man. 
But the blind man who received his sight by the grace of Christ said, We have never heard that a sinner had restored sight to the blind, and God does not listen to the prayers of a sinner, but whoever fears God and ministers unto God, God will hear his voice. Because of that the man was driven out of the synagogue and was regarded as a confusionist. Our Lord Jesus Christ on hearing that he was driven out of the synagogue went back to him. Our Lord Jesus Christ asked him, Do you believe in the Son of God? The man retorted, Where is the Son of God, so that I may have faith in him? Did he know him? A great many people who are shouting Jesus, Jesus, do not know him. Some are abusing and cursing him, as they like. Because you are eating bread you begin to make a necessary noise that it is so hot oh. I can't go away from that place, because I have seen God face to face. This thing has eluded you. Our Lord Jesus Christ said to him, The one talking to you now is he. At that point he knocked his head on the ground and worshipped God. That was a self-recommendation. Let our first lesson be read. This is why I continue to tell you where this thing hinges. You have to refrain from sins so that this kingdom may be revealed to you. Many of you are here because your ailments were cured or your problems were taken away. It is not up to three people who have seen and known this kingdom. First Bible lesson, John chapter 3 verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It is not easy to know the Son of God. Let me show to you an example, so that you may know what it means. I plead that you should not vex. John the Baptist baptized our Lord Jesus Christ, and with that baptism the Holy Spirit descended on the Lord and revealed him, as the Son of God who will take away the sins of man. Matthew chapter 3 verse 17. They went each into different directions after that revelation. Do you know why it is so? God had revealed to him, John, that he should baptize with water, and that whoever that the Holy Spirit will descend upon, the same is the Son of God who shall baptize with spirit and fire. It is not that easy to know God. You cannot know him so well and be wholly convinced, except with the wisdom of God. I want you to note that it is not an easy thing for somebody to know Christ, not to talk of knowing God the Father. This thing you are joking with is not easy to come by. It is, because God instructed him to baptize with water, and whoever the Spirit will descend upon, the same shall baptize with the Spirit and fire, he, John, said, I bear testimony and also believe that he is the Son of God. That was, why he baptized with water. That was the manner he was revealed to him. It is just like somebody casting lots and whoever the lot will fall on is the one involved. In this case, as soon as Christ was baptized, the Holy Spirit descended upon him, and John identified him as the Son of God, and after that each man left to his own direction. Do you know whether after that John still doubted in his heart that he, Christ, was the Son of God, because Jesus was his cousin? You cannot say whether he was wholly convinced. People were not happy with him. Because they thought he, being the son of a high priest, at the same time calling the son of a carpenter, Jesus the Christ, the son of God, it means he was demanded. They did not believe. Why did they not believe? The reason is that they did not repent. Are you sure that John believed wholly in his heart that Jesus the Christ was the son of God? Because Elizabeth, the mother of John, and Mary, the mother of Jesus the Christ, were sisters. When John was apprehended and imprisoned he remembered that it was said that when the Messiah comes he will set the captives free. He thanked God for the Christ was there who will set him free. He waited for long and Christ did not come. So he sent two of his disciples to go and ask Christ whether he was the expected Messiah or whether they should hope for another person. Matthew chapter 11 verses 2 and 3. Did he, John, know what he was doing? Realize therefore that, if it were difficult for John the Baptist to know him, think about what it would look like in your own case, because what you are now toying with is not a child's play. God has different ways of revealing himself. God's grace on this generation is indescribable. But it was said that we shall see him face to face. That is why this teaching is so difficult. So that by practicing it you may recognize and know him. It is not a thing of dream or vision, nor does it border on food or clothes. You are expected to be spotless and blameless, else a little temptation will cause you to deny him. It was the same minute temptation that caused John to doubt him. 
When you are sick and do not recover immediately you begin to ask whether you have made any mistake by coming to brotherhood. At the end you rush to the juju doctor or the medical doctor. By behaving this way does it show that you believe in God? You are still taking injections, you are fornicating, telling lies, and committing other vices. And I ask, is that the life pattern of somebody who professes to see God face to face? Have you truly seen God face to face? But what about the noise you are making here? If you were to see God, or Christ, or the Holy Spirit or angels, would you laugh carelessly here? Would you behave the way you are behaving here? The thing is not yet clear to you. Do you think God is so insignificant or that Christ is unimportant? For me you're telling people, I am the Christ every person fell down. John chapter 18 verse 6. Recall to mind the case of the four wise men. Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. They were fire worshippers. They were spotless and had no sin in them. They served God at all times and would always make fire and worship it. But they were here in all their involvements. Because of this God revealed unto them about the birth of Christ. It is not that easy to know God. Why is it that nobody knew him in the whole of Israel and the entire world, except those four wise men? It was revealed to them by way of a shining star. He did not reveal his deity to them physically but by a bright star, because they were not worthy. Who are they to know him that much? They followed the shining star to where the child was. When it got to where the child was the star stopped. It was through that that they knew him. Did they know more than that? It is because they were not worthy. But it is said about this generation that a neighbor shall not teach a neighbor, neither will a brother teach his brother to know God, because right from the least to the greatest will know him. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 34 Hebrews chapter 8 verse 11 It is God's grace unto mankind that he, God, should be known. It is no more a thing of the dream, neither is it by a star nor healing your sickness that makes you know him. What is the omen of your seeing God face to face? Your knowing God this time around borders not on your being given money or wife. If you practice his teachings it means you shall see him without which you cannot see him. If you don't see him how will you worship him? How will you resemble him? How will you be like him? A lot of people are saying that there are many things to be observed in brotherhood, that people are told not to eat meat and fish, not to commit fornication, not to be angry or weep. I am conscious of the fact that you have not seen God. That is why you are told to refrain from these things. You only deceive yourself when you say that you have seen God face to face. Where is the sign of your seeing God? Will you behave the way you are behaving now if you were to see God? Sometimes you stay for three or four months without coming here. You come in here when you have problems which defy all curative measures of your juju and medical doctors. Does your behavior connote that of somebody who sees God? Do you see God? It is not that easy. Take care with the word of God. That is why our second lesson says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. But people are roaming about making such statements, as, until Jesus comes back, our Lord has not yet come. Where lies your preparedness? How do you know that he has come or that he has not yet come? Somebody will come here and say that he has seen God face to face. When you are asked by people you will reply that you have seen God, the Father, face to face. But when you are asked the sign of this God you have seen, you will ask the person that, if somebody should preach 1st January to the 31st of December every year, whether an ordinary human being can do that apart from God. Or that, if somebody should cause the dead to rise, whether he is not God. Or you tell the person, I was terribly sick and he healed my sickness. Does it mean, that whoever heals your sickness is God? By these claims have you proved your case beyond all reasonable doubt? It means you are not sure. God is not known by a vision or healing. If you know him by vision it means you don't know him. Many of you here know him by visions. When a visioner's eyes are cleared will he know what to say again? If things are like this with you what do you think about those outside? From the 19th of this month we have been observing the Christ Universal Week to commemorate the birth of Christ. And it is a known fact everywhere that from 19th to 25th of December every year in Brotherhood is always for this celebration. But have you seen people here? Why are there not people here? Right from Monday till today being Sunday we are rejoicing about his birth. This celebration is what we are doing every day. Where does he go to? He is born every day. 
Did you know that we were celebrating his birth here from Monday till today? Were you found or seen here? Do you know that for 365 days we are embroiled in the celebration of his birth in order to glorify him? This is the time of his glory. When people say that brotherhood does not know Christ, I always ask, who knows him, if we do not know him? What are we preaching, what are we dancing? All the things we do reveal the glory of Christ, and these shall continue till eternity. Brotherhood came to reveal the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. You have been told that brotherhood is not a church, it is not a prayer house, it is not an institution or healing home, it is neither a service center, but brotherhood is the glory and kingdom of God. It means we have seen something. Upon all these troubles and blasphemies put up by people against us, are we shaken? We are not shaken and we are always marching forward, because a local victim says, whoever witnesses knows how to tell the story, because what you are told by somebody may be untrue. Those who have witnessed this glory cannot backslide. Look at the Christ students here. They are constant and firm, because they have seen something. Have you seen what they know? Do not be angry, because you are saved. Let our second lesson be read, so that you may hear the injunction which is given to you. If you derail from this injunction it means you have failed. Second Bible lesson, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Follow peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Our duty is to glorify him. Is that not the teaching given unto you, but don't you say it is so difficult? If you cannot keep this instruction how will you see him? If you go and tell the Pope, now that the Christ is here, he will tell you that the Lord has not yet come. If you like go to church leaders or the bishops and archbishops and declare to them that the Lord has come. They will tell you that it is not yet time that he should come. We have seen his glory. Right from the 8th of this month it is his birth we have been celebrating. Every blessed day we are duty bound to glorify him. All the things we do sum up to glorify him, because we have seen his glory. We have no other thing to do than to give him the glory he deserves. But other churches are questioning at one time or another what brotherhood members are rejoicing about. Why is it so? It is, because they have not yet come to this understanding. A great many people have refrained from eating meat and fish but after some time they will look for fish and eat hungrily. Does that prove him as a believer? Perhaps he thought, when he stopped eating fish he will have a child, or money and other things. When such people will stop eating fish and meat for say two or three months, and their heart's desires do not come, as expected they will return to their former position of eating fish and meat. In the first place, if you brood through the scriptures there is no place which is written that Christ shall die. But now the church denominations are arguing, even Jesus Christ died. Is it true that he died? If you read the Bible you will understand that Jesus Christ did not die. He lives forever. But others claim that our Lord Jesus Christ died. By so saying do they know him or do they see him? John chapter 14 verse 19 says, A little, while the world seeth me no more but ye shall see me, because I live, ye shall also live. Dot was he talking, as somebody who is leaving for some place. He said, Whatever ye desire ask in my name, and it shall be done. John chapter 14 verse 13. Don't request anything from the hands of man, believe in God, and believe in me also. The young man is moving about doing his work. He is man, he is spirit, he is the word, he is wine, fire, tree, fish, and he is everything. Forget about those things. Dr. Basie saw a body of light. But if you want to see him, follow peace and holiness with all men, without which, for your seven incarnations on earth you shall not see him. You refrain from quarreling, fighting, mourning, weeping, lamenting, bearing malice, fornication, adultery, lying, corruption and hatred in order to be holy. You follow peace and holiness with all men, so that you may see the Lord and his kingdom. Do you now realize the reason why Christ asked, how difficult is it for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God? Matthew chapter 19 verse 24, Mark chapter 10 verse 23. You can recall when Dr. Basie, A.K.A. Garwal of India, came. He stood here, and retreated back. He said he saw fire and questioned why he saw fire, and not the Father. He questioned me why can't I see you physically. Instead, I behold a furnace of fire or a great illumination. Who was to give him the answer to such a question? I commanded him to ask himself. He was asked to get baptized, but he refused. 
He said that instead of baptizing he was ready to go back home. I ordered that he should come in. What did he see? What did he take back home? He came with nothing, and returned with nothing. Flee vices. Don't tell your father, mother or any other person that you have seen God. But tell him to refrain from sins. Right from the time of old it is sin that has caused man not to see God. Sin got into man so much that people were involved in litigations, quarreling, committing adultery with another person's wife, snatching of people's husbands, indulgence in preparation of concoction, drinking of liquor and other vices. With all these impurities how do you hope to see him? You have heard our second lesson, follow peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. It does not mean that he is not in existence. He is here. Where did he go to? He goes nowhere. Who owns the world? Who owns the heaven and earth in the fullness thereof? Where do you think he can go to? When you see him you will resemble him. Will you encounter problems any longer? But when you continue to request, God give me money, car, steamship, or cause this or that to happen. Is that the person who claims to see God? Those who see him do not put up in seemly behavior. Remember when our Lord Jesus Christ questioned his disciples, who do men say I am, Matthew chapter 16 verse 13. They answered and said, some say you are prophet Isaiah, some say you are Elijah, some say you are Jeremiah, others say you are that prophet, etc. And Christ asked them, who do you say I am? Peter rose up and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he told Peter, it is not flesh and blood which has revealed this thing to you, but my father who is in heaven. And he charged them to keep sealed lips and not to tell anybody about it, until it is fulfilled. Matthew chapter 16 verses 15 to 20. Christ means king and ruler. In their language Christ does not mean pastor, or bishop. Bishop has no meaning over there. Christ means the one who rules over fishes, angels, man, and other creations. He is not a man made of God. Now the Father is here on earth. The Son is here on earth. All the children of God are here and the angels are here as well. Have you seen them? God is omnipresent, omniscient and omnipotent. He is in the water, in the mountain, inside your body. He is present everywhere. If you were to believe that God is here would you have paid huge sums of money to somewhere to seek prayers? If you were to believe that Christ is here, or that you have seen him, if you were to believe that the Father is here, if you were to believe that the Holy Spirit is here would you complain that something is causing pain in your leg or that you have come with sickness? Would you ask for children and money? What did the three wise men seek from his hands? He was only two years old when they went there to worship him. Can you be so hardened to request that God should give you life? or that God should cause somebody to defray your debt, or that you are suffering from waste pain. Does somebody who acts in this way believe in God? I appeal that you should not be angry, because we are having a discourse. Take the case of the birth of Christ. He shall be born this night. But you find that people will be busy causing trouble and confusion, drinking illicit gin, having matches in their hands. Male and female prostitutes and others are ready with their charms and talisman, they put around their necks, waists, wrists, ankles, etc. Others go with snuff bottles. Does it mean that our Lord Jesus Christ is a troublemonger, or a confusionist? They kill. Some drink and become drunk. They beat people up. They cause trouble and confusion, and they do all kinds of things which are inglorious to God. Does it show that such people know him? Is that the proper way of commemorating his birth? Are these the things to be done by people who profess to know him? Let our golden text be read. Listen with rapt attention. Be not disorganized, because God makes and makes. It is said that judgment will start within the church, and if it shall be difficult for the children of God to be saved, what about those outside the fold who do not believe? 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 17. Imagine it yourself. Golden text. 1 John chapter 3 verse 3. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. If you hope to see the Lord, purify yourself. It is said, Blessed is he who does not see yet he believes. John chapter 20 verse 29. That is why he says in the first lesson, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. When you argue, I cannot refrain from taking snuff, I cannot stop smoking. 
In our family, if we don't retaliate our offenders we are never satisfied, we cannot forgive our offenders, I cannot refrain from fornication or stop eating fish and meat. Alright, since you are incapable of leaving these practices, how will you manage to see him? What does it avail you coming up here every day? Because you have refused to repent. Tell me the good you derive from coming here every day. If you also argue, oh, I can't forgive that person who has done that thing to me. If I don't pay him back I cannot be satisfied. I cannot sleep alone in the house, because there are numerous women and men in the world. I have to enjoy life. I cannot stop drinking, I cannot stop quarreling and being angry with people, I can't stop doing this or that. I am asking, my so doing will you see him? Will you have any share with him? Already you are repeating, until Jesus comes back, while he is here already. The 72 hours dry fasting is not always observed by every person in brotherhood. Those who observe it are not up to half of the whole people in brotherhood. Those who cannot do it maintain that the Father has done it for them. They continue to say, oh, my father has done it for me, because he knows I am a human being. He closes that chapter with such statement. Having said so, is the problem solved? Today is Christmas Eve. Tomorrow is Christmas, and we shall ever dance and rejoice in him. You need to come and see, how we will dance with dexterity. This joy continues till the new year and for eternity. We do not rejoice in any other thing or person but in him. But tomorrow the people of the world who claim to be church goers, before it is noon they are back home to drink their illicit gin. They will drink and quarrel, fight and break one another's heads with the bottle. But such things are not wanted here, because we know what we are worshipping. And every person that hath this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. He is a holy being but every person has become defiled and unholy. I am making this declaration from the highest heaven that all those who hope in him should purify themselves even, as he is pure. If you hope to see the Lord purify yourself even, as he is pure. Apart from all that, till doomsday you will not see him. For you to be called a Pope, or Archbishop of Canterbury, or Bishop, or Reverend, or Pastor, Apostle, Prophet, Elder, and all other names you answer, cannot save you. The names of church denominations do not save anyone. But if you hope in him, purify yourself even, as he is pure. Brethren, it is said that one stroke of the king is sufficient to teach the wise. We shall not be tedious unto you. He who has ears, let him hear. May God bless his words. Amen. Thank you, Father.